Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I'm just going to go ahead and make a few moves on some daily chess games that I'm playing. And hopefully, doing this over the video is going to help me talk out my process, my thought process a little bit, maybe hopefully slow me down. I think my biggest um, obstacle to overcome, basically, is so often I'll, I just get tired, I'm not in the mood or something, but... I'll make moves that are just fast without really thinking about them, even though I don't have the time pressure, because these are daily games. You can sit there and stare at them forever if you want to. So I think that's why my, my daily chess rating is noticeably lower than maybe some of the my rapid chess rating for longer games, just because I'm not really thinking as carefully about those moves. <clears throat> so let's see what we've got here. Okay, so in this particular game, yeah, so I'm white, and I do have a one pawn advantage against my opponent, but I just really feel crowded. Um, I don't know if this is something where if I'm even able to pull a win out, or they're going to check me. I think I made a move on this game earlier in the morning, so obviously I can... Move down here. I've got arrows turned on now. I haven't used them before, but I had arrows turned on, so I'm still figuring out how to do that. So I'm wondering if I'm just, I, I feel like I have to protect this pawn though on c4. So I can't really move my queen too far away. I allowed the black king to get over on this side. And I don't think I'm gonna have time to get my g pawn up to the promotion square. I don't know. So, um, Obviously, I have to do something now. I suppose I can Well, what did I just do? I think I exited out somehow. All right. I'm still trying to figure out this whole right click method. I don't know yet what things I can move. So obviously I should be able to in theory block, but whenever I do that, it goes away. So I guess I can't I, mean, I still I guess I just need to practice drawing arrows more. So obviously I can block with the queen and if they take I'm going to get my king up there on g4 but I still think black is going to have a much easier time. They're going to be able to take out my c and d pawns and they're going to have their connected pass pawns ready to promote. So I think I don't think I can do that. I think I just got to keep moving down here. Hmm, okay. Next game. Okay, so again, I'm white. I just moved my queen over to f3 earlier in the day, and so black just took my queen, so we're trading. So now it's just a matter of do I take with the knight or with the rook? I don't think there's any logic to taking with the pawn. But I shouldn't discount that too quickly because that could be part of my mistakes too as I discount moves too quickly without really contemplating them. Take there. Oops, I'm still figuring this out. All right, back over here. Okay. So take there and that kind of opens me up on this but that's still protected and I would think pretty soon Black is going to be pushing that F pawn down to roust my knight. And I don't have too much left after that. Take with the knight. That gives me another protector on that D pawn. Their knight can go to f4 right up here hmm and I'm not sure how to push that knight away uh, or if I can or should or even worry about it yeah so these are the moves where I get into their positions I guess I get into middle and in, in game where 
Yeah, I just don't feel like there's much I can do. Because even after I take this queen, I'm still going to be down a bit in this game. But I like my knight there for now. So I guess I'll take with the rook. And my opponent's still going to have a, a two-point advantage. A two-point advantage. And of course, the big concern is those queenside pawn, those queenside pawns over there. I guess technically that's the king side. But these two connected past pawns on the A and B files, and I don't know what I can do to attack while leaving those pawns out there. Ooh, another potentially drawn game. They have a one pawn advantage. They've got two pawns to my one pawn. And I don't know where to go from here. So I think we're getting into a couple of repeat moves where I'm just kind of trying to protect as much as I can my last pawn and threaten one or both of their pawns while also trying to uh, avoid their knight from pushing me too far away from the action. So I think I want to keep keep my king as close as possible here. And uh, maybe I'll offer a draw. Yeah, I'll do a draw offer. See if the opponent accepts. Okay. Next on the list. Yeah, this one I think I'm I'm my goose is cooked on this one, right? They've got a four pawn advantage. And based on the rating, they're they're rated much better than me, especially for my daily games. Now, obviously, if I can go back in time, I probably should have been playing this smarter, but I'm kind of rejuvenating my focus and goal to get better at chess after I've already started these games. So it could be very likely that I've got some mistakes that I just can't overcome right now with these games. So obviously they're forking my rook and my king, so I have to act, and really the only logical action is gonna be to take. Now, of course, they're gonna go right in. Now, they, of course, they can choose, right? They can take with their knight. They've got two of these knights right over here on my side of the board. They can take with a knight, or they can take with their rook. They might take with their rook, which is then gonna fork my knight and pawn. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, um, conditional moves and I know I should probably resign here anyway but we'll give it another couple moves just to see so if they take here once again I'm gonna have to act and there's not much I can do to protect this pawn over here I suppose I could move up I'll move up this way so that way they don't have a direct check with one of their knights and of course, if I was them, why not just take that pawn? And what can I do? I can't move here because I would lose to the pawn. I can't take the pawn because I'd lose to the knight. Lose to the knight, lose to the rook, lose to the knight, lose to the uh, pawn. So my rook is just stuck there doing nothing. I can't take, I can't move away which really leaves me just with a few pawn moves. Okay. Let's see, I think I've made those moves, so I'm willing to bet that's what they'll do. And we shall see. Next game. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to resign this, I know. <laughs> I don't know if I want to put this video out. It's a little bit embarrassing because I've got all these bad positions and I've just, you know, I've got myself into the mess, of course. But, yep, once again, my opponent's got some, got a pass pawn right here that they're just going to be able to push that all the way down and promote. I can't get down and protect my pawns. I'm white again here. Um, yeah, you're like, geez, all these, you know, you're white in so many of these games and, yeah, just struggling with them. So... I think, yeah, they've got a clear path to promoting to a queen. The best I can do is try to get my pawn up, but 
I can't bring my pawn forward. They'll take with their pawn. I take their pawn. They're going to take my pawn. And I can't take back because it's protected. So I really don't have a good move here. I can't move any of my pawns. I like the chain, but it's just they're locked in. The only pawn that could potentially move is this back one, but that's not going to help. That's just going to get them closer to a promotion square. So I can't move any pawns. I can't move this G pawn. The only thing I can move is my king. There protects it a little bit longer, but yeah, I'm protecting my G pawn. But of course, their E pawn, the black E pawn, is just going to push forward. They don't care. Okay, I'm going to resign this one. So, I do want to get in the habit. I will go ahead and resign. Yes. And uh, I'll come back and do analysis and stuff on separate, separate actions. But let me go ahead and jump over to the chat. And good game. Okay. What's the next game on the list? And let me go this way. Now this one I actually feel good about. Played this move a little bit earlier. Let me back up a few moves. Yeah, so I'm black here. And um, at this point in the game, they've got a one point advantage, one pawn advantage. But I just recently, a few moves earlier, moved my queen to really start an attack on them. Trying to get my rook into position so that I can start to check and hopefully checkmate. They're starting to block and parry and stuff like that. Now I'm taking here intentionally. I'm taking their knight with my rook because I know they're going to have to free up and expose their um, their their rook to take back. And that gives me an opportunity to take with check. So I'm feeling confident about this game, but now I just need to work on being able to, to close. Um, I'm chasing their king a little bit. And I'm trying... Oops, I clicked the wrong button there. I'm trying to do what I can to not let their king get away from this corner. I want to try to keep that king in the corner and see if I can't checkmate him there. And I don't want it to run away and somehow get back. So so my last moves are starting to bring this pawn in. So I'm hoping if I can bring my H pawn in a little bit closer to the action, that's going to give me some check or checkmate options um, along this H file. They see what's going on, so they're bringing their queen into the mix, and this is where we're at now. <clears throat> now, um, oh, you know what? I think I've got a good opportunity here, though. They want me to take, of course. They want to trade off queens, which probably isn't a good idea anyway, since I've got a lead. You don't want to trade when you've got a lead, right? But I can move over to h1. Now, their king can't really do anything, right? The king can't move down, can't move over to the g4 square. So the only thing that white can do in this is block me with their queen. And after they do that, <coughs> excuse me, after they block me, what is it, how is that going to change things? At some point, am I going to have to take their queen? I could move down here. They could re-block. But then I can move my king, or my, my rook, can slide over to h1. And then, I think that would be it. I think so. Okay. Well, I can't draw arrows really well anyway, apparently, and I, I get too confused if I try to draw too many arrows, I think, or try to figure out too many moves, but I think this is the way to go. If I move here, they have to block with the white queen. I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to the... Um... No, I'm going to accept that move. 
and I'm going to go to conditional moves and the king can't move anywhere, right? No. So the queen has to block, but I don't want to take yet. So I'll move my queen down here. Now, if their king moves to h4, I actually can do multiple conditional move lines. If their king moves here, then I'll just check. The king can't take. The only possible king move is down here. And then if I bring my queen here, that should be checkmate. Correct. That would be a checkmate right there. Okay, so that's one series that I think leads to mate. Now I'm going to hit a new line. White blocks. I recheck. White queen blocks. I check with the rook. What, are they, what can they do in this situation? Oh, that's checkmate. Cool. So that's checkmate. They're locked in. All right. I think that's good. So I'll exit out of that. I got those conditional moves in there. So hopefully that game will uh, wrap up sometime tonight. Now this game is still early on. What are we we're just in uh, move eight? And they're pushing my bishop away. So I really don't have too many responses here. However, you know, I've got to do something with that bishop, right? But I'm watching a lot of those chess bras videos, you know, Eric Hansen, a lot of that stuff. And is there value to me moving my bishop out right now because I can put an attack on their queen? And I like that idea because I think it's a more forceful move and I, it's something I don't think I'm very good at. So maybe I should do it just because it's not my first thought. My first instinct is to run and hide here, is just to move that bishop out of the way, which probably is a good move. But I'm wondering if I put my dark squared bishop, attack their queen, what are they gonna do with their queen? Their queen is very likely going to move to g6, right up in here. So they'll move their queen there I'm not necessarily worried about that right away because then I'll, I will move my bishop out of the way. So I can go bishop there. They can move their queen there. I'll move my white bishop or white squared bishop there and i guess i don't know if i'm really improved but i see i get away from that attack and i develop a piece which needs developing yeah i think that's what i'll try to do so i'm gonna go ahead and bishop g5 and now they have to respond with that queen move I'm not going to do conditional moves on this one just because, yeah, I guess they could, but I just don't know what I'm going to do next, really, I guess. But um, but they only have a couple moves with their queen, right? They can they can move their queen. Oh, wait. Did I, oh, I have to accept that. There we go. I'll accept that. They can move their queen to e6, but I'm just going to, I'm going to challenge their queen again with this other move. So that's not really smart. So they're definitely going to move there to g6. Yeah, for sure. And I guess even if they do move to g6, I'm still, my next move is going to be my, my bishop to b4 because I have to get out of that pawn attack. So if I did do a condi uh, conditional moves, they move their queen here. I move my bishop there. And if I was them, I'd probably move their bishop here. I might take, they would take...
And maybe this is good, isn't it? Is it good? I don't know if it's good or not. Well, they're, their dark squared bishop has really some development issues. Obviously, it can move down here, and they can trade off with my better dark squared bishop. That's probably what they should do, right? Hmm. Yeah, I guess that's pretty good. I guess I'll accept that. So if you're doing conditional moves, you can hit that X and get rid of it if you want to change your mind. I noticed I can do conditional moves on the computer, and I can do it on my phone, but I can't do conditional moves on my tablet, my iPad, when I'm playing chess.com. So... Not a big deal, I guess. I don't really use it too often, but it's coming in handy since I'm on the computer and I can uh, do those moves. All right, I'm going to get out of there. And it looks like I'm getting some more moves building up, so uh, more games building up, so I guess I will uh, exit out of here soon. I do have a lot of daily games kind of going all the time, so it's usually every morning I'll make some moves, and in the evening I'll make some moves. And this is a new game. Excellent. All right. We're both similarly rated, uh, mid 1400s it looks like, and um, is that Indonesia, neat. Okay, and this is a three day uh, daily chess game. So I don't know if you play daily chess at all. I like it obviously because there's less time pressure, and but it probably is encouraging bad habits, you know, me making quick moves without thinking. So once again, that's why I'm recording these videos mostly. Um, people may, find them interesting or learn a few things, but I think for the most part, um, I don't really know enough about chess to be a teacher or a coach on it, but it really does help me slow down. Already, I think I've acknowledged lost positions and I can kind of see some potential with some winning positions. So I'll go ahead and make a classic E4 pawn move. <clears throat> That's probably one of my go-to moves. Um, I don't know enough of the openings to be very, very complicated or tricky. But. All right, what else have we got? Another new game. So yeah, I've signed up for a couple of these. You can do daily chess tournaments on chess.com and I've signed up for several of them. And sometimes I'm a little bit vague on when they start or how they work, but um, all of a sudden you'll just get some new games going. So um, it's been kind of fun. And let's see, this is a different opponent. I'll do another e4. And for this one, I'll do a d4. And for this one, d4. Oh, must be a new tournament that's starting up. That's why I've got all these games on here. I didn't have these this morning, so they must have all just came in sometime in the middle of the day. All right, I'll go back to... Oh, no, that's, I can't remember if that's a similar player. Yeah, I'll do a d4 on that one. Yeah, sometimes they, they give you two games with the same person. Okay, looks like I have several new games. So, all right, looks like my uh, calendar over there is telling me I have to get back to work anyway, so I will put a pin on this action. And again, thanks for hanging out with me.